God created this creation, who created God? <laughs> How long does it take for a soul to reincarnate? Gurudev, how did this creation start it? If God created this creation, who created God? And what is God, actually? Listen, Constantine, <laughs> there is something which is very constant. <laughs> that doesn't change. That, that is not created, right? That is the basis of all creation. If you ask me what is the beginning of this creation, I would ask you with another question. Tell me which is the beginning of a ball. If you take a tennis ball and tell me where does it ball begin, it is the same thing. So this world is an appearance. If you say how is the mirage created, now it is just appearing. Nobody created a mirage, right? Uh, similarly, rainbow, you know, it is an appearance. So, world appearance is the right word to say. Now, sun seems to be setting, seems to be rising. Sun neither sets nor rises. So, similarly, uh, the creation, uh, the way we understand is a very linear thing. But truth is spherical, much beyond that. Yes, we can say something originated from this, this, but it is very relative. We don't know how coconuts came. We can't say coconut came from apple trees. <laughs> which fruit came first? How do you say which one came first? I don't know. What was created first? Banana, apple or coconut? Jackfruit, which fruit was created first? It's a futile exercise to go in that. And where was it first created? This is again another misnomer. That's a wrong question. If someone says, where was the first coconut tree? Was it in Hawaii or Kerala or in Indonesia? You know, where was the first coconut tree? Why we should localize it? Coconut tree could have come everywhere. Hawaii is in the middle of nowhere and you have all the fauna flora. You can't say a bird brought it from Africa and put it there. You know, like the anthropologists try to find the origin of human species. So they say it's all originated from Africa and they moved all over the world. We can't say this for everything, you know. Why don't we think differently, spherically? Everything could be everywhere simultaneously. The linear thinking demands us to look for the source and the end. But scientifically today they say the whole universe, you can't measure it linearly. You have to think spherically. Is each person's mode of death already predetermined? Yes. Yes. How one will exit the planet is determined. It gets determined with the birth. But the extension of life, that depends on a higher power. There are many stories in the Puranas about a boy called Markandeya, he was given only 16 years to live and then um, Lord Shiva, the, the Lord of the Universe, he prays and then he, he was granted more life. So there are many such incidences. Meditation, prayer, sankalpa, your intention can all extend uh, the duration of life. It's possible. Gurudev. How do ancestors bless us if they have taken another birth? There is a part of that impression 
that is still out there for some time. Uh, and that would definitely give blessings. Because it is part of the universal consciousness. Like you have come away from a place, but still your photo can be there, your impressions can be there. <laughs> and people do connect with the pictures, right? Gurudev, how long does it take for a soul to reincarnate? There is no criteria, no time. It can just few hours or may take thousands of years. It depends on the karma. The people who reincarnate almost in few hours. Gurudev, how can we ensure that we don't carry strong, unfilled desires into the next lifetime? Uh, we must see what we desire. What is the goal of that desire? Is it to have happiness, bliss, that you can have anyway? So, we must see um, whether this desire is really, really needed for us, or it is futile. That I would call as wisdom. You know, when you see, say, suppose you want to build a house on top of a hill, and this is your desire, and it doesn't fructify, in the fag end of the life, you can't go, I want to have a house on the top of the hill, you know. Okay, you can have it. Next life you will do it. But if you see, so what if I don't have on top of the hill? I can have it on the beach, you know. So, something better may come to us. If you put your attention on that, be hankering over it. If someone says, oh, I want to build a big place, an ashram or a temple, and it takes me so many lifetimes, that means your spirit is very weak. If your spirit is strong, you wish and then it happens. That is Siddhi, that is perfection. We want something and it happens. This is when? When we are centered, you know. When we are centered, when we want nothing, then any desire doesn't take much time to manifest. That's the power of yoga. Yogis take one desire in many, many, many years. You know, if you are far away from yoga or spiritual practice in one day, you have many, many, many desires. <laughs> that is where the sadhana helps. You know, pranayama, sudarshan kriya, meditation, all these practices are meant to free you from all type of obsession. Whether it is from this life or previous life or some old impressions, all this helps. If life is a dream, Gurudev, how can we wake up from this life dream? The realization life is a dream, you are already awake. <laughs> you know? Just that little thought that this is all like, like a dream. The entire past is like a dream. You know, the future could be a dream. That shifts something within you. Then you realize, oh, there is something that is beyond the, the ephemeral world we are in. Something that is not changing that appears to be the context of everything, that turns. Only thing is we cannot just take it as a concept, but leave it. Feeling is different from just having a, oh, life is a dream, is a concept. But feeling, yeah, this is all like a dream. You know, this happens whenever you are very happy. Is it real? <laughs> <laughs> you wonder, oh, is it real? But when people are miserable, they think it is very real. When our consciousness is stuck in the outer, in things and people and events, then we forget our own strength, the strength of the seer. We are with the scenery, we are lost in the scenery, and when we keep losing ourselves in the scenery, we start becoming miserable. So we take a step back from the scenery, wait a minute, let me go back to myself. So when you withdraw, this is the very essence of yoga, getting back to the seer. From being lost in the objective world to getting back to the source of subjective world. 
this is what. Gurudev, I'm a little curious. How do mediums know about the souls that have left the body? Did they not reincarnate yet? The world of spirits are very mystical and very deep. A consciousness has so much treasure. It's like fathoming the ocean. People who study oceanography, at least they know something about ocean. But with the consciousness, there are so many levels of spirit, several levels of souls. And so some souls can choose to become mediums. They can speak through people and all that thing happen. But many times the medium themselves are not very pure and very clear. So they get all mixed up. So it will not be purely uh, channeling a particular entity. It could be their own mind, their own uh, cravings, aversions, all those things also comes through that. Some of the predictions would be right, but many of them will go wrong. Past will be right, but future, they can't predict. These mediums cannot fully predict your future. Gurudev, there's so much energy inside an atom, enough to make a nuclear bomb. And yet I'm made up of so many of these atoms, but I get tired so easily. So where's the disconnect there? Well, you know, you may have electricity at, at your home, but your switch is off, then you will still be in darkness. <laughs> you have a lot of power at home. You have energy. Your gas cylinder is full of gas, but it is off. So you won't get that coming up in the fire. So you need to know how to tap into the energy that you are. Gurudev, there is war and there is peace, but our efforts are always towards peace, to bring peace. Are they in vain, these efforts? Because we cannot escape from the negative, from the war and things like that. It is part of life. Correct. See, nature of water is to flow down, right? You may eject it through a fountain, so that even the water goes up, but its nature is to come down. Like that, the nature of every human being is wanting happiness, wanting peace. Even when someone is going for war, why they are going for war? Because they want to be peaceful. <laughs> they want to be prosperous. That is why someone is going for a war. They are afraid they will lose their peace of mind, so they go for war. So our nature is moving towards peace, moving towards happiness. This, nobody can stop that. Like the nature of fire is always to go up. That's why I keep saying opposite values are complementary. They in a very subtle way complement each other's existence and they depend on each other. There is an interdependency of all this. Peace is in contrast with uh, disturbance. People who have gone through disturbance, they value peace more, isn't it? You ask a kid, what do you want, peace or lollipop? They will prefer lollipop. <laughs> they will prefer to chocolate to for peace. Gurudev, if we think about doing something bad, but we don't actually do it, does it count towards our karma? <laughs> if you want to do something bad and you resist it, that's good. That's your good karma. But you know, don't have to worry about those thoughts come and they go away. You are much, 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 much bigger than those thoughts. Yeah. As long as you don't flow with the, those thoughts and uh, identify with them or take them as your own, you are safe. Gurudev, does everyone who reaches liberation come back in order to help the other souls to reach liberation? Not necessary. Not necessary. Some come back with compassion to help others. The others, if they are designated, they will come. Gurudev, sometimes when I meditate or when I fall asleep, I have this feeling of dissolving. But at that moment, a fear comes in me that I'm not this, but who am I? And that fear, oh, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. And then I'm like, but who am I? 
how can I handle this fear of letting go and not be afraid of what is? That's where the spiritual path, uh, a mentor, teacher, master, will all have a lot of meaning. When there is mother at home, a child feels safe. Similarly, in spiritual practice, when you feel that you are going into another realm, then you should know you're not alone. There are other people who have already been there and they are with you. You know, it's like going to a new area and you need to have a guide. And there is a guide, then you don't worry. Okay, there is a guide. And in, in the car, if you're driving somewhere, you have GPS with you. So you know you will not be lost. That's why seekers have always been asked to have a teacher. Uh, you know, seeker cannot just do it with books. Uh, in India, there is a saying called Guru Bina Gatine. There is no movement without a master, without a teacher. <laughs>